everyone and welcome back to my working table. <laughs> this video will be rather a short one because it was an unplanned one. Just a couple of days ago my neighbor visited me and brought me an empty canvas, the one that you are going to see here in this video, and asked me if I can do something pretty out of it. So I just wanted to know what colors he had in mind, so he just requested me to use the colors black, white and silver and to see what happens. And you know what? The first thing that came into my mind was the golden acrylic pour palette that I've used before, just without the gold, but with the silver. And this was actually what I was going for. So having my color palette planned out, I just had to look at the canvas itself, because it was, well, strangely shaped. It was a really long one, but not a really high one. It was a 20 centimeter by 1 meter canvas. So I never tried something like that before, and I was not sure in the beginning which technique I actually want to use. I first thought about using a swipe technique, but having that length of the canvas I really was not sure if this is going to work, because by doing a swipe I imagined to have a really bright upper part and a really dark lower part, because I cannot drag the paint over the entire range of the canvas, and probably even not without wobbling by dragging the paint, so I would have probably have reared shapes in between. So the swipe was off my table for this part. Flip cup also did not really work in my imagination because I had too much of a distance to yeah, to push the paint around, so I will have awkward cells and strange structures, so I did not really want to risk it. So in any way I just picked option number three, which was just pouring the paint into a cup and pour it over the canvas, which in a way it feels like my golden palette paints. And in case you did not see this video, I will link it here again in this video so that you can check it out. It really is a nice one. And perhaps it inspires you to try something similar. So show me the results if you do. And after my planning phase was done and I knew what I actually wanted to do with the canvas, I mixed my paints. And for those of you who follow me for a longer time, you perfectly know what is coming now. My color recipe. <laughs> So just very quick, if you are new to my channel, this is just two parts of float drill, one part of paint, water if needed and some drops of silicone until you have the consistency of honey. This is actually everything that I do. Just a small tip, the more you stir your paint once the silicone is in, the smaller the cells are going to become once you pour it over your canvas. When you only stir very lightly and not that much, you will have bigger cells forming. So whatever you want to have in a way. As I was not sure how good I can stretch the paint, I decided to make the borders, so the upper and the lower border, just black, just to have a somewhat base to, yeah, to make the paint flow over, actually. So I do not want to have any white gaps um, of canvas showing through in the end, so I just painted it black and then in the middle I yeah, poured my paint over it. And that was really quickly done. It was quite a lot of paint. I was not sure how much paint I will need, so I think I used a bit too much paint. So it took quite a while to, to have it dried, I think about two days until everything was dry. But yeah, so what? At least nothing fell onto it this time. <laughs> and then there is this moment when the paint is poured onto it and you struggle with yourself if you're going to use a torch or not. I really hesitated a bit at this pour, because I was not sure if the torch will be so good for the end result. But not much was happening on its own, so I decided to use my torch and to bring up some cells. Sometimes these pores also look really pretty without using a torch at all. But you know the struggle. If you're pouring yourself, you, you, it itches in your fingers to use the torch and to see if, if it looks better in the end. Sometimes it really does not look better in the end, but unfortunately there is no undo button, which I really would love to have in real life in so many occasions. So this is so often the case when I watch my, my videos which I filmed, so the footage that I filmed and I'm going onto the edit phase, which I am doing now by doing the voiceover and such. And there is so many parts of the video I think, oh, this, this was pretty and this was even prettier and oh no, you shouldn't have done this, you know? and. There is no way back and in the very end I often, most often, like the results that I'm getting and even if I don't like the results I tell you and I really like the result of this one. But sometimes there are so many phases of the painting that I would have loved as well if I wouldn't have changed it anymore in the end, so when I, when I watched the footage of the video. So yeah, there is so much that can be done for the good and for the bad, 
I just always hope to, to get the best in the end, <laughs> as you probably do the same with your pores. And that was basically everything about the pour itself. I wanted to film the final everything is dry critique part again live, as I ended up doing quite often lately. This day Patrick wanted to watch a movie and so I couldn't just film it for you. So I just continue with my voice over here. When it was dry, again it took about two days, but everything dried pretty and nice and everything was perfect. I of course had to varnish it. And I often receive some questions about the varnishing technique that I'm using and what product I'm using, which is really no secret. I'm telling this every now and then in some of my videos just when this question came up. And so I do here again just in case you wonder. And this is really everything else than magic. If you have used silicone in your pour, you first have to make sure that all the silicone is removed. And I remove silicone by adding baby powder or kitchen flour right onto the dried artwork. Make sure it is dry completely. And the baby powder or the flour I let sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. It doesn't take so much longer. And what it does, it soaks up the silicone that is sitting on the canvas. And once this is complete, you can just brush it off. So I just use a soft brush and brush it off the canvas. I use some kitchen soap and a soft towel and just brush over it again to remove everything leftovers from the flour or the baby powder and then let it dry perfectly fine. You probably might not get rid of 100% of the silicone, but even if there is 10 or 15% left, you will be good. And once everything is dried again, I apply the varnish. I use the Liquitex Gloss Varnish. It is so far my most favorite one because it's odorless, it's really quickly drying and it's shiny and it's, for me, just perfect. I have tried other varnishes before which were very smelly and I really did not like to have smelly artwork. And this one really is my favorite so far. I have linked it in the description box if you want to check it out. I also have linked all the other materials that I'm using. And everything is linked to my German Amazon page. And most of you, I guess, are not from Germany, so you might not be able to order it from there. But you can see how the product is looking, what the name is, and you can check it on your Amazon or local vendors as such. If you are from the US and wonder about my Artina store, where I get my colors and my canvases from, there is a store which is called Sargent Art, or Sargent Art 24, I never remember this, on the US Amazon page, which looks pretty similar. So you can get the canvases there, you can get the paints there. The Artina store has quite cheap paints, which I'm using. So a liter of this paint is about eight euros, which is quite cheap, but the paint is awesome. And so I, I had a look at this store and it looks quite similar. So if you're from the US and wonder what products I might be using if I were US based, this would be my go-to store to test things out. I'm not sponsored, I'm just telling you because people were wondering where I get my paints from and, and Artina does not ship to the world. So this might be something worth trying for you. Yeah, returning back to the artwork. Um, just apply some of the varnish onto the artwork and use a soft brush to yeah, spread it around. It doesn't have to be even. So if you have small lakes of varnish left or that you can see brush strokes, it really is no problem. It dries almost flat. And if you have areas where the varnish is applied a bit thicker, there is no much of a deal. In the occasion that you have some rest amount of silicone on your artwork, which was not removed in your first attempt, you might have some cracks in your varnish. So it looks like an old oil painting. So it's these very tiny, small cracks in between. Just let it dry, don't panic. And once everything is dry, just apply a second coat or if needed, a third coat and everything will be just fine. So the cracks will disappear. You will have an even surface. Everything is good and shiny. And the more layers you apply of this varnish, the more it looks like a resin coat. So the more layers, the more even everything is going to become. So I really, really love that stuff. And it dries in about, I don't know, half an hour or so, or 20 minutes, depending how thick the layer was that you applied. So really an awesome stuff. So I think this video was again longer than I expected. I did not do a final picture of it because it was, yeah, just brought to my neighbor once it was dry. Um, yeah, but you can see the end result here. I hope again you liked it. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have whatsoever questions, please leave me in the comment box below. I already received some questions for my upcoming Q&A video, so please keep your questions coming so that I have a variety of questions that I can answer and to show you. 
And if you're new to my channel and really liked what I did here and what you've seen, please make sure to subscribe. I have a ton of other videos about acrylic pours, realism, oil paintings, whatever you want to see. And if you miss any kind of video, just let me know as well and I will see what I can do. Yeah, I think that's it. Hi again, thank you so, so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day. <laughs> bye bye.